transparency. We had an issue with the heads when I put the radiator support on, filled it up with coolant, and it started leaking from the intake bolts, like right away with those iron Vortec heads. They were drilled and tapped for carburetor style intake, but apparently that's not just the greatest idea. And I'm not the greatest mechanic, so ordered these Flowtech heads. Uh, they're 180cc, six, uh, 180cc intake. 64cc um, chamber, uh, 202, 160 valves. Um, of course, they're aluminum. And they were assembled, pretty inexpensive. Put those on, buttoned everything back up, put the coolant in it, got these hoses for the power steering that I showed earlier, and got that built. And of course, that gearbox leaks, which is a nightmare because you can't hardly find those like anywhere, remanufactured or anything. They'll list them on the parts store website, but they can't get them whenever you try to order them. So I'm going to look into a rebuild kit because a new one's seven or eight hundred dollars for a steering gearbox, which seems bananas. Um, it is bananas. So anyway, put everything together. Um, we went through the wizard for the poly sniper system and everything checked all was well so i thought why not just bust it off and it fired right up and of course this is a flat tap at cam so i'm trying to go through the break-in procedure and did great for a second over 2000 rpm and started kind of popping and crackling pretty bad i'm sure my, my timing i did check it my timing was off some on the uh, hyperspark distributor um, they call it putting it in phase with the rotor and it was off some from being removed and primed and not put back in the right spot when we primed the engine before starting it. So problems. We reused the rocker arm nuts which is uh, don't do it. Not super commonly known but again I'm not the best mechanic so it's commonly known to me now. Um, got new ones B at the parts store this morning. I'm 100% sure that these are going to be loose because of those backing off because all the nasty backfiring and popping when that engine started leads me to believe that the valves aren't opening and the uh, spark plugs were pretty well fuel washed smelt pretty fuely had a backfire through the carburetor once i do apologize um, for not even bothering getting the camera honestly a little little nervous about capturing it on any kind of video footage in case it grenaded. All right, so here's the issue. Some of these have obviously backed off because you have slack in the rocker arms. That's a problem. That means that valve's not opening, which that's an intake valve, so it's not letting fuel and air into that cylinder. Um, this side, even if fuel and air made it into the cylinder, this wouldn't let it out. Um, potentially, the next time the intake valve opened, you'd get the backfire because it would still ignite, but the only place it had to go was back out of the top. I uh, just had my local O'Reilly order these up and they had them within an hour. Um, they're like 99 cents a piece. Um, so these are new nuts for that. And so they're perfectly round on the bottom where they begin to be threaded on that stud. But at the top, they're actually a little elongated one direction. So what happens as they run down that nut, they create resistance uh, because of not being perfectly round. The ones on the truck have been used at least twice so that oblonging potentially had rounded out and now they don't stay tight while the valve train is operating. So I've got all the nuts snugged down. That's where they start really getting resistance. Should be pretty difficult to turn them by hand. Now, my method of running the valves, which I'm sure there's a hundred videos out there, 
I like to adjust a cylinder at a time. And the way to do that is watching the intake open and when the intake closes, which means when this rod raises up, and when it drops back down, that makes the valve closed. You can adjust both the intake and the exhaust side at that point. All right, so we ran all the valves. Um, and then I'd like to turn the engine over several more times and then just recheck a few of them. Uh, just to kind of see if the rocker arm happened to be in an odd place or in a bind when they were originally set. Should eliminate any errors. Let's put it back together. All right, got it put together, pulled out, got the fan on, just hardwired to the battery, fire extinguisher, key on. Shouldn't have to go through any more of the setup as it was uh, done originally. I may verify a few things if we have any trouble, but um, should be ready to start. We'll see. Not sure we where we ran out of disk space, so not sure when the camera shut off. I'll find that out in editing. Hmm, then we'll both know. So, good news, it did fire right up. Uh, it wanted to idle. That's a thing I guess the sniper's going to do. I'm going to get on the phone with Holly and probably sit on hold for, you know, the ne the rest of June. But uh, we're going to find out why. Like, I'm supposed to maintain over 2,000 RPM for the first 20-30 minutes of break-in time on a flat tap it, flat tap it cam. I think the Holly's fighting me and wanting to reach the set idle speed because if I let off the throttle, it'll sit there and idle beautifully. If I try to hold it above 2000 RPM, after a, after a little while it just says nope and it'll like completely cut out power from the engine. Um, but cooling is fine, um, air fuel ratios, monitoring everything on the handheld and on the uh, Envision dash. Everything is doing good. Uh, thermostat open, coolant stayed where we needed it to. Uh, so I think we're in good shape. We just have to figure out how do you break in a flat tappet engine with a Holly Sniper EFI that wants to learn idle and air fuel ratios and self learning stuff immediately. That's confirmed. About 20 minutes on the phone with Holly, and um, they said, Yeah, the thing's fighting you. It's trying to do whatever idle you set it at, which I had at about 780, I think target idle speed so that's what it's trying to accomplish um, while it's learning and of course so it's fighting with me and suggestion is which makes sense set the target idle speed to 2000 rpm if you can may need the mechanical override as well making adjustments on the throttle body on the throttle stop but uh, he did tell me if you can get it to learn that based on the uh, setup wizard should be in good shape so we're going to do that and then fire it back up. back in the garage um, torn back down um, took this wheel off for easy access gearbox I took to uh, someone to rebuild it um, because even after new seals it still leaked and there was issues and it's just not worth risking with steering safety third so he called me and that's ready I can pick that up tomorrow you can see I just kind of tied these 
uh, the, this is the high pressure supply line from the pump and just kind of tied it together with the reservoir in case I did by chance want to start it back up um, before that came in um, but I don't think there's any need to uh, also my fan shroud made it um, so that's super nice um, stamped uh, aluminum sheet it looks awesome hope the camera shows but anyway yeah so it's put back together break in um, I feel like it's complete I will get the exhaust system on it I talked to him today he's just ready when I am um, so when I get the gearbox put back on take it to the exhaust shop have that done I'll get some footage for you guys and then the next time we start it it can be normal sounding and not like a log truck Thanks so much for watching guys and I'll see you next time.